G'day guys and girls and it's John Michaludis here from MyExcelOnline.com. In this video, you're going to learn how to clean up and extract data using the best formulas and you're going to be surprised at what we're going to uncover. I will show you the must-know Excel analytical tools to further your data analysis and make insightful business decisions. But before we go into this video, I would like to mention the great feedback we received from Oz's video number one where he showed you the different ways to clean, transform, and automate data using Power Query. That video alone got over 1,000 unique views in less than one day of going live and over 70 comments from satisfied viewers. And these are some of my favorites. The conversion from QuickBooks report into a flat file was the most useful part for me. I wish I should have known all this before. The next one, I've always wanted to give Power Query a go and didn't know where to start, but your video and working examples have given me the perfect start. I sent you your video to about 50 colleagues and one of them installed Power Query straight away. And she gets data from Oracle and has cleaned it up all the time. When you showed the trim feature, she was sold. <laughs> I would like to thank everyone who sent in the comments and to us who worked tirelessly answering every single one of them. You can still send your comments through at any time at the bottom of each video page. If you haven't watched video one, then you can scroll down this page and click on the image to watch it now. Also, have a look at your inbox as we send you the links to these free training videos. If you haven't received these, please check your spam or promotions folder. As you may or may not know, I got myself a new office just so I can escape home and record these videos for you. Now, this is it here, as you can see, and I'm gonna show you just quickly uh, my office so you can get a feel for it. Okay, so I've got my camera here and I'll turn it around. All right, on the right here, as you can see, I've got this big light down there. <laughs> so the videos have come out nice. <laughs> it's very bright. And let's go all the way there. And you can see I've got my whiteboard a whiteboard there and then I've got here my chairs you can see my table so I can sit down and have my lunch and a video camera there so yeah this is the office there it's pretty cool now I need to install a bed so I can have my siestas here now I live in Spain so this is in the north of Spain so siestas are a must um, so yeah I gotta get a bed <laughs> all right so that's the whiteboard there as you can see pick up the kids at 5.25 you know I gotta put a note for myself because I always forget um, and it's not good if I'm late and also you can see there we've got our new power query and data cleansing course and the contents there and I'm um, you know we're working on that now as we speak and so yeah this is the office here uh, pretty cool office pretty quiet and it just allows me to get these new videos for you new courses which is what I'm concentrating this yeah. Now let's go on to introduce you to the next video. All right, let's go on to this video. Now you're going to love this next video as I'm going to show you the tactics the Excel pros are using and how you can apply the same features to your workbook saving you hours each day. You can download the Excel workbooks from each, tuto from each tutorial that I show you so you can practice by using the download link below this video. Make sure to comment on any questions that you may have and I will reply with a solution straight away. Now let's get on to this training series. The proper function capitalizes the first letter in a text string and any other letters in the text string that follow a space. It converts all the other letters to lower cases. Now this is great when you have capital letters for the first and last name. So the proper function is simply looking into the text cell and it recognizes that the first letter of the first name and the surname should be in capital letters and the rest in lower cases. So let's put in our proper function equals proper and the cell that we're looking into is in here close parentheses and press OK. Let's double click in here. And as we can see, it's converted the upper cases all into a proper name as we are used to see.
The trim function removes all spaces from text except for the single spaces between words. So the formula breakdown is trim and our text string or cell. So what it means is let's trim this text cell. As you can see here, we have our four names and we have leading and trailing spaces. We can see that from the eye here that Melendez doesn't really start from the left side of the cell and neither does Clay. As you can see also, Mr. Boner has a lot of spaces between between the first and the surname. Now this usually happens when you download data from an external data source and it comes in in, in a messy way. And we can clean this up using the trim function. Now, as an example, let's try and sort this. Click in one of these names and go to data and sort A to Z. You can see that it sorted the leading spaces first and then it starts with all the names. So this is an issue. Another way to check whether we have leading or trailing spaces is to click in a cell and press F2. And you can see here, I've highlighted that, we, you can see that we have a couple of leading spaces there. Let's escape out of that. We'll go down here again. We can just double click if you like. And then once again, you can see the leading spaces there. Let's go to this one here and press F2. We have one there. And let's go to Theodore Delaney, F2. You can see there we have some trailing spaces as well. Now, if we were to do a VLOOKUP or a MATCH function, then Theodore Delaney would not get picked up because he has a trailing space. Now, looking at it from far away, you can't tell that he has a trailing space. So imagine going through all your data and doing the F2 and you know that's gonna take a long time to check. What we can do is put in the trim function. It'll clear all the leading spaces from the front of the name. It'll clear all the trailing spaces from the end of the name. It'll also get rid of the extra space between the first and, and the last name. So let's go in there and put in the equals trim function and the text cell. Let's just select it and we can double click to fill down. So you can see that that's all done. Now let's paste all this as value. So select all that. A quick way is to, with your mouse, right click in any of the edges of the selection. So the green border, right click. You can go out and then go back in again and let go of the right mouse button. And it brings up this dialog box here. And we can say here, copy here as values only. All right, so let's copy the values and got rid of the formulas. Now let's press F2 in there and we can see that's fine there. There's no trailing spaces. Let's have a look in there, no leading spaces, that's fine. We can do the same here for every one of them. So let's clear everything up. And also for Mona Bona, we can press F2. You can see it has one space there and it got rid of the extra spaces in the middle. Now we can go and sort this from A to Z and we have that in correct order. So the trim function is a fantastic function for you to clean data within an instant. The text function converts a numeric value to text and lets you specify the display formatting by using special format strings. The formula breakdown is text, the value, and then the second argument is the format text that you want to apply. So what it means is value you want to format and format you want to apply to the value. Now, in our table here, we have different values all the way down here. We have numbers to dates and also dates and time formats. And the format that you should apply is located over here. I've got it all there. Okay, now the format has to be in between double quotation marks. So what I've got here is if you can see, press the F2. 
Now, I've got the plus sign, don't worry about that. I'm in Europe, so I'm using a European keyboard. So whenever I usually start a formula, I start it with a plus. If you start a formula with a plus, you put in the equals and the plus, so ignore that. Now, so what I've got here is text. And the first argument is C6, which is getting the value. The second argument is I've actually put the format in here. So if you put in the hashtag and then followed by question marks, divide question marks, it will give you the fraction. Let's go down here. We have the text, which is 10,000. And then the format text, we put in quotation marks, a hashtag, and also a comma. Now, one comma means it gets rid of the three trailing zeros. As you can see there, so it gives us the 10. Another example where this is good is, we can put in there the two commas as I've done here. That gets rid of six zeros. Now what I've done here is I put in the ampersand and then put in double quotations, a space, and then mil. So it shows us 100 mil. Let's go into the dates down here. Now, when you have a date and you put in this text function, you put in two M's, it gives you the month number. Go down here, if you put in three M's, it gives you the month name abbreviated into the first three letters. Let's go further down, and if you put in YY, it gives you the last two digits of the year. If you put in YYY, it gives you all the digits of the year. You put in DD, it gives you the actual date number. If you put in DDD, it gives you SUN, which is abbreviated for Sunday. If you put in DDD and one more, it will give you everything there. Now, I put in uh, a capital D, it doesn't really matter if it's lowercase or uppercase. Let's go down here and continue. Now, I'll put in the H colon double M and then AM, PM. So what that gives us is it just extracts out the time and the an AM or PM. Go further down here. I'll put in, in double quotes, date, date, backslash, month, month, backslash, YY. What that does, is it extracts only the date from this format here. Let's go further down. In our last example, what I've done is I've put in the month first, then the dates, then the years. Now, that, this is typical for the American calendar. So what it does is it brings in the month in the front, then the date, then the year. So there's a lot of different ways where you can use this awesome text function. I've got some several here which you can apply straight away. Go for it, use it, a great way to clean up and mash up your data and also show it in the way that, that you want to. The left function returns the first character or characters in a text string based on the number of characters you specify. The formula breakdown is left text, which is the cell you're looking into, and the number of characters. And that is optional. What it means is we're looking in a cell, and from that cell, we are extracting the number of characters that we want from the left side of the text. Let's do an example. We have our part numbers here, and we can see they're all pretty consistent. And let's put a length function, which is the length function, and just to check the number of characters in our part numbers. Equals len. Let's select our text and press OK. That's 10. And we'll have a look at that. That's 10 characters. So what we want to do is extract the first eight numbers. So anything before the dash. So you take away two, we're left with eight characters. Now let's put in our left function equals left the text is our cell here press the comma the number of characters we said we want to extract the first eight characters from our text string 
press A, close parentheses, and we have our number. Double click in the bottom right hand corner to fill down. And as you can see, we have taken out all the part numbers right before the dash. The write function returns the last character or characters in a text string based on the number of characters you specify. So the formula breakdown is write, the first argument is text, so the text string or cell that you're looking in, and the second argument is the number of characters. Now that's optional. Now what that means is you're looking in a text cell and you're extracting the number of characters to the right hand side of that text cell. So as an example, we have our addresses here, as you can see, and we have an address with a five digit zip code. It's all in one cell and we'll go all the way down here and we can see that. Now we want to extract the last five digits from this address, just so we can get out the zip code. Now, to do this, we put in our formula equals write. Our text string is in here. The second argument is the number of characters that we want to take out from the right-hand side of this text string. Now, we want to take out the first five characters, so it'll be one, two, three, four, five. Put in the number five, close the formula, and we get the number 31437. Now, if we double click on the right here to fill down, as you can see, it's taken out the zip code from within the address. The substitute function substitutes new text for old text in a text string. So the formula breakdown is substitute text, old text, the new text, and also the instance number that it occurs in. So what it means is substitute this cell by this old text character to this new text character in the instance that it occurs. If this text character occurs more than once, then you're going to choose whether it's the first, the second, or the third occurrence within the text string that you want to replace. Let's have a look at this by going into this example here. We have different part numbers here. So we have hyphens between the two digits in the middle. And we want to replace the second hyphen in here with a hashtag. The new part number will be equals substitute. The text is in here. The old text is a hyphen. So let's put the double quotes to capture that. The new text is going to be a hashtag. So double quotes, hashtag double quotes. The instance number, the first hyphen is the first instance number. The second hyphen is the second instance number. So let's put in number two because we wanted to replace that. Close parentheses. So you can see there, let's double click all the way down here, that our formula has substituted the second hyphen with a hashtag. Now, you can replace it with any numbers there, or you can replace it with any words, whatever you like. In this example, I've just used the hashtag. The replace function replaces part of a text string based on the number of characters you specify with a different text string. The formula breakdown is replace old text, start number, the number of characters, and the new text you wanna import. So what it means is starting this cell, starting from this number all the way up to this number, and then replace with this new text. We have part numbers all the way down here. And you can see there are three digits, then a hyphen, then two digits, then a hyphen, then two more digits. Now we want to get rid of the first digit here and replace it with nothing. We can do a find and replace, but that means if we replace the hyphen with nothing, it'll get rid of both the hyphens. But we just want to replace 
the first hyphen and get rid of it. Now let's put in our formula here, equals replace the old text, which is the text that we have here. Start number, we want to start in position number four. One, two, three, four. That's where the hyphens are. Start in number four. The number of characters is one. So that captures the hyphen. The new text, we're going to enter in there what we want that hyphen to replace it with. It can be anything. It can be a number. It can be a text string. But we want to get rid of it. So let's put in the double quotes. That means it's going to get rid of it. Close the parentheses and press enter. As you can see there, that's double click to fill all the way down. It's got rid of the first hyphen and kept the second one. When we use text functions to extract numbers from a text cell, it returns it in a text format. And we can see that. If we click in here and double click, we've done a simple mid formula to extract the fifth number and two characters. So extract the two middle numbers. And you can see that here all the way down. Now, if we evaluate this formula by going in here and pressing F9, you see the two double quotes, it means that it's text. So if we want to sum this amount or do some analysis, we cannot. We've got to convert that to a number. Another way to find whether this is a text or a number is to use the is text formula. So in here, let's put in is text and reference this cell here. True means that it is text, so we can confirm that as well. Let's get rid of that. Now, to convert a text to number, there are four different ways. We can add a zero. We can put in the double dash before the function. We can multiply by one and we can divide it by one. Let's copy this in here into each of these in here. All right, F2, let's add a zero. Before we do that, let's put a formula here is text. And you can see when I make the changes, it will change from true to false. Is text. True, okay, let's copy this in here. Now, let's put in a zero, add zero. Let's press F2, and before the mid formula, let's put in the double hyphens. Now, in here, let's multiply by one, and in here, let's divide it by one. So there you go, four different ways to convert text numbers into Excel numbers. You can quickly format your cells using the format cells special number format. A lot of people don't know this, but it actually does exist. Now we have a zip code here, and the cell entry is this number there. And what we can do is just press Control-1 to bring up the format cells dialog box. Then go to special, and we have the option here, zip code or zip code plus four. We can see how it's gonna look. Let's choose that and press OK. We also have a phone number here. Once again, click in there, press Control 1, Special. There's a phone number section there. You can see the prefix and also the hyphen there. And press OK. Look at that straight away. Imagine having thousands of rows of data. You can highlight everything and within a couple of clicks, you have that formatted. And finally, the social security number, very important for everyone. Control one, special social security number. Look at that. Oh, yes. I love this. Sometimes you get data and you have some blank cells and that's not a good sign. If you want to do analysis, and use pivot tables, then you know that's not going to help you in your analysis because you're going to get a lot of counts rather than a sum. Now, a great way to check your data and see whether it has blank cells is just to highlight everything. So you, from here, click anywhere within your data, press Control Asterisk, and that will highlight everything. And then Control G to bring up the Go To Special and choose blanks. Go to blanks, and you see there, it highlights all the blanks. 
that's great. Now, a good tip is to go to the font and put in there a color, a red. You can see it's highlighting red. So you can go one by one and start filling in the blanks, or if not, you can just delete the whole row. So it just highlights where the blanks are, and you can spend time and fill in the gaps. You can also, from in here, you can sort by color. So you can sort by the red color, and you can do the same thing in each row. And it drills in to the blank cells, and you can make decisions whether to keep this or and actually spend some time in filling in the gaps. When you get data downloaded from an ERP system, it's good just to go over the data just to see whether there's any duplicate values there. And it's, you know, if you got lots of rows of data, you can just quickly skim through it and see whether there are any duplicates. We can see here that we do have duplicates, Fake Brothers, West in December for 90,967, and there's a few there. Now this is only 18 rows of data, but imagine having 100,000 rows of data. You don't want to spend your time going through everything. You've had a quick look and you know there are duplicates. There's a quick way of removing duplicates in an Excel table. So this is an Excel table because when we click on it, the Table Tools tab comes up. When we're out of it, it doesn't. So we know it's an Excel table. And under the Design tab, it's got the Remove Duplicates option there. Now let's unselect all, and we can select where the duplicates are. Now we know that in the customer that there are duplicates there called fake brothers. Now in the order date, we may have duplicates and it could relate to another customer. So let's not do that. The same for the region. Now the best way is to look at the unique identifier and it'll be something like a unique identifier or a customer. So let's check the customer and press OK. Now when we press this, it's going to take away the duplicates and just keep one. Press OK. You see there are five duplicate values were found and removed. Eight unique values remain. We have a full name here in our list of data, and we can use text to column to split the names into first name and last name. So what we need to do is highlight our names of data and go to data, text to columns, and in here we choose delimited, go to next, and then choose tab and space. So what it does is you can see here in the preview that What's going to do is it's going to split the names into two columns and we can go to next and it says here where do we want to put our data in B6 we can drop that in and then in C6 the surnames will get dropped in there and press finish as you can see there it split the names into two separate columns as easy as one two three All right, now we're gonna talk about Flash Fill, which is a new feature in Excel 2013 and onwards. So what Excel Flash Fill does is it detects a pattern in your data and then it fills in that pattern all the way down. So you have your data on the left-hand side in the column and on the adjacent column, you type in a different pattern that you want to take out from your data. You type in one cell and then you type in a second cell press flash fill and then that pattern that you like fills it in all the way down so it's a great way to clean and manipulate your data with a press of a button and without using a formula now let's activate flash fill it's already installed in your ribbon and activated but sometimes it doesn't work because you need to put in a checkbox now if you go to your data tab here on the top you see flash fill so that's how you activate it. But let's go on to your back end of Excel and go to File and Options. And under Advanced, you go all the way down here and you got here Automatically Flash Fill. Make sure that's ticked. Now sometimes it may be unticked. Someone may have played a trick on your computer 
but you make sure that that's ticked so you can work properly. So that's how you switch it on. Now let's go on to an example here. So we have a first name, middle name, and a last name. I want to put it all together into one column. So you got to type in the first example to say, hey, flash fill, this is how I want my data to be filled in. So type in John J. Michaludis. And then it's always a good idea to type in a second example, especially if you have large data and you have different permutations. So let's type in Oz to Soleil. Now, to activate Flash Fill, just go to Data and Flash Fill, or you can press Control E. Control E is a shortcut. Now we're gonna press this button here. And you see that it's taken the first and the middle name and the last name and put it all into one cell. You see that? Beautiful. Let's go to another example, extract names. We have a full name here. I want to extract the first name in this column and also this last name in this column E. Now put in the first name here, John, press enter and then type in O. Now I'll press in O and then it gives me a suggestion. It says, okay, you're gonna put in Oz. Is that correct? And then at the bottom here, you wanna put Brian and Lita and Mika. So what you wanna do is take out the first name from the full name. It gives us a suggestion. If you like this, press enter. If you don't, just type in something else. We like this, let's press enter. And it fills it in. Now you get this box here. Let's tick on that. You get under the flash fill, you can accept these suggestions and you can select all five changed cells. So you've got a couple of options there. Now we don't do anything there. If we don't like this flash fill, we just undo it. Or you can also press Control Z, press Control Z or Control Y to go back. Let's put in that last name, Mikaludis and press in Control E shortcut. You see there the first, the, sorry, the, the last name has been automatically extracted from this column and put in here. How cool is that? Let's go on to format numbers. We have a phone number here and we want to put in a hyphen after three, three digits. So every third digit put in a hyphen. Also the last number, we don't want to include it because it was downloaded in an error. So we don't want that, it means nothing. So the three, the five, the one, the six, the eight, let's get rid of it. So to do that, press in 814 hyphen, 428 hyphen, 422. Okay, press enter. We like this. We can do another example here, but let's just press Control AC if it accepts it. Okay, it does. You saw that? It's put in a hyphen in every third digit, and also it's taken out the last number. So there's a lot of different ways that you can um, do flash fill. You can actually add in another number if you like, or a letter at the end. Imagination can go wild. It's, it's open to, to the way that you want to um, manipulate your data in and there's no limit here. If I wanted to add in an AA at the end here, for example, let's get rid of this. 814 hyphen, 428 hyphen, 422 hyphen and add in AA. Add a couple of letters. Could be a serial number, not a phone number. Press enter and then press control E and you see that it's added in AA to all the numbers there, as well as include the hyphens in every third digit. Pretty awesome, yeah? Next example is move text and numbers. We have a serial number, 123ABC786SWR. We want numbers first and then letters. Now this here is wrong. It says ABC123. We want 123ABC. We want the numbers first and then the letters. We can do that, but we're gonna tell Flash Feel this is how I want the data to be extracted. Let's do two examples, one, two, three, A, B, C. Okay, we want our data like that. And for these numbers here that are back to front, we want to put in digits first and then the letters. Now, we can just press Control E. You can highlight everything as well, up to you. Press Control E and it fills it in. Perfect. Now, if this didn't work, for example, this, Last number here, it was probably in, in a, it didn't fill it in or it filled it in in a different format. It happens, if you, especially if you have a lot of data. Flash fill may not go, in 1% of the chances, it may not fill everything in. If you have it, then you can manually just say, okay, this has to be 456DF. Press enter and then it will change that cell and all the other cells that have errors in them as well. So you can manually make changes to flash fill cells 
that did not work properly the first time. Now we have add text here. We want to add an email into first name and last name. So we have a list of first names and last names and we want to create an email for them. So we want to put in John dot Michaeludis at email.com. Okay, data, flash fill. There you go, bang. It puts in the first and last name and wraps it into an email. Imagine you had thousands of rows of data. You can do it in a second. No more formulas. Text your dates. Okay, so we have some dates here in this format and we want to put it into an Excel format. But we're going to do a couple of, of suggestions here to flash you because you have different versions. Uh, the American version, you've got the month, date, year. The Australian version is date, month, year. So what I want to do, I'm an Aussie, so I want to put in the date first, 31st of the 1st, 2016. Okay, and then let's do a couple of these because with dates, it's a bit tricky. You may have to do two or three different um, scenarios. And let's put in the 15th of the 1st, 2016. And we're here, just press Control N, and you see that it's filled it in. Now, if there was an error, it's okay. Just go to the cell, type in what you want to do, press Enter, and it'll fill in all the other cells there. So, Flash Fill, it's an awesome, awesome feature in Excel 2013 and 2016. You don't have to use formulas, and it's within a second, you can fill in thousands of rows of data. You can extract data to the way that you like it, data manipulation, data cleansing at its best. Well, I hope that you learned something new from all these fabulous tips that I just showed you. If you have dirty data and want to extract it the way that you like and don't know how to using the formulas or Excel's analytical tools, then please comment below and I will get back to you with an answer straight away. Make sure to be as descriptive as possible. And if you like, you can attach a sample workbook via link or image with the comments within the comments area. In a couple of days time, you'll receive the third and final video in this free training series. In that video, Oz is going to return with his funky hat and sexy Barry White voice to show you how to consolidate multiple workbooks and worksheets using Power Query. This tip alone is the most asked that I get from within my 45,000 plus blog subscribers each month and one that will allow you to automate your reports and come up with insightful business analysis which will give you superhero powers. Now watch out for my email to you in the next couple of days which will tell you when this video is available for you to view. Until then, keep excelling.